Shields All Sports Store is your one stop for everything outdoors with local experts eager to guide you through the widest selection of brands. Your one stop for exercise gear to get working out or fashions for going out. And your one stop for footwear in your size, your style, yours to take home today. Shields, employee owned, community minded and like no place you've ever shopped before. Dr. Kelly Tobin and staff at Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic are proud supporters of high school athletics. When it comes to large and small animal health, look to Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. They understand how important your livestock is to you and will give you service that you can depend on. Call 539-1040. That's 539-1040. Rolling Hills is located on Dakota Avenue across from Farm Bureau in Wessington Springs. Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need, the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home. Now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. The heart of farming season is coming up, and Kayton International is your KHIH dealer in Crofton, Nebraska. Kayton International offers top-notch parts and service to keep your equipment running smoothly all season long. Their team of experts is there to help with any maintenance or repairs you may need, so you can focus on what you do best, farming. And don't forget to check out their website for the latest deals and promotions. Whether you're in the market for a new piece of equipment or just need some replacement parts, Kayton International has you covered. We travel in packs. Fearless first-timers and goat getters, sightseers and mudslingers, trail conquerors and adrenaline junkies. We believe great rides deserve great company. And wherever the ride takes us, there's always room for one more. Experience the enduring legacy of Castlewood Farms Elevator, a farmer-owned cooperative that has served the ag community for more than a century. Dedicated to enhancing efficiency and offering superior services, they provide a comprehensive range of crop nutrition, protection products, commercial fertilizer, and livestock feed. Visit CastlewoodElevator.com or give them a call today. Your ultimate destination for agriculture needs is Castlewood Farmers Elevator. Discover a piece of Americana at Cone's Corner, a renowned 1920s rural gas station turned firearm haven in the upper Midwest. Since 2004, their updated store has preserved nostalgia with gas pumps and snacks for travelers alongside a selection of 2,500 firearms. Purchase in-store or through Charlie for global delivery. They buy single guns, entire collections, and offer trades. Whether you're a collector or looking to sell, they've got you covered. Cone's Corner, proud sponsor of Castlewood Youth Athletics and Events. At Heartland State Bank, our customers are at the center of everything we do. Heartland State Bank is a family-owned community bank and here for you. We have an experienced lending staff for fast, local decisions. Heartland State Bank offers competitive rates and is proud to provide uptown services with a hometown touch. With four locations in Redfield, Tulare, Wessington, and Highmore, we aspire to support the communities we live and work in. Heartland State Bank, member FDIC. It may seem like the smallest town in South Dakota, so how could it have everything you need when you may find yourself in the middle of nowhere? But at Canova Service Center, whatever you may need in the middle of nowhere, that's where they are. Fencing, lumber yard, hardware, oil changes, tire sales, and repair. Rental equipment, feed bunks, cattle shelters, convenience store, and more. So no, you're not in the middle of nowhere. It's the Canova Service Center. 
We're your local one-stop shop. This is Angela, owner and operator of Amcota Farm and Home Center. From the DIYers, fixer-uppers, to contractors, we have what you need to get the job done. Building supplies, Valspar paint, and tools. Crystal X tubs, fencing supplies, and bog boots for your farm needs. We know how busy life can get. We offer delivery to make your life easier. Amcota Farm and Home Center on Dakota Avenue in Wessington Springs. Big city value. If you love being outside, solving problems, and working with your hands, apply now at James Valley Landscape Solutions. James Valley offers on-the-job training in all aspects of the green industry with modern equipment and technology and competitive pay. Benefits include overtime pay, health care, dental, vision, and more. Apply now at jamesvalleylandscape.com or in person at 600 West Spruce, in Mitchell. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator is a proud supporter of the Mount Vernon Mustangs at the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator has been servicing the Mount Vernon area for over 75 years. See them for your agronomy and feed needs no matter the farming season. They will take care of all your grain handling needs as well. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator would like to wish the Mustangs and all the teams best of luck at the state tournament. Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union insurance agent today. Each family's needs are different and special. Will Funeral Chapel will listen with sensitivity, answer all questions, and respect your choices. The Will Funeral Chapel staff can assist you in planning and coordinating all the details. They will explain all the different options to make you feel at ease and most comfortable with all the decisions. Find out more by visiting their website at willfuneralchapel.com. Their sincerest hope is that you and your family will be comforted by their efforts. Are you in need of high quality lumber for your next project? Looking for top notch agronomy services to keep your crops thriving? Need a reliable source of propane and fuel for your home or business? Look no further than Tabor Lumber Co-op. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIY enthusiast, Tabor Lumber Co-op has everything you need to get the job done right. And with their competitive prices and top-notch customer service, you'll be glad you chose Tabor Lumber Co-op for all your lumber, propane, and agronomy services. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platte, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at FarmCoSD.com. FarmCo, Farm feeding, feeding your, your future. future. Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek and Howard, and Valley Station in Armour are your 100% locally owned team of agronomy experts. We offer Agronomy 365, which provides info in real time to make decisions that result in better, more profitable farming. We know you and your operation with service beyond compare. Get a jump on spring planning with Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek and Howard, and Valley Station in Armour. We are ag done right, the American way. Bank West is rooted in South Dakota. Committed to local success. Just like you. We're all connected. In South Dakota. 
for South Dakota. Convenient, connected, committed. Bank West. Game number five in the beginning of the night session here in Mitchell, South Dakota for the 2024 State Amateur Baseball Tournament here on Live Ticket TV. Thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Spencer Buley. I'm alongside Heath Nimke, and we'll have the Minnow Mad Frogs versus the Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks coming your way in just a moment. Still working through the round of 32. Games three and four took place earlier today. We saw Dimock Emery defeat Lake Norton 7-2, and then Castlewood beat Tabor 7-5 in two pretty exciting games, and now all eyes looking forward to this one here. Taking a look at how these two teams got here, we'll start with the visiting Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks. The Wood Ducks come in 3-12 and 12 overall. They are managed by Jake Ellens. They come out of District 4, the Corn Belt League. Representative number 5, they lost to the Flandreau Cardinals, defeated Madison, and then defeated Coleman to qualify for the state amateur tournament. Flipping over to the other side, we'll look at the Menno Mad Frogs. Mad Frogs come into this one 4-14. Four and 14. They come out of the South Central League, managed by Tom Sattler. As so we await the graphic for the Minnow Mad Frogs. District 6, the South Central League, their representative number 3. They defeated Irene 12-1, Freeman 9-2, and that is how they qualified for this state amateur tournament. Starting lineups are being announced on the field. We'll have those in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV. He is proud to support our local farmers. Rooted in agriculture, we are committed to our customers. You can shop local with c &B, your John Deere dealer, providing you with new and used equipment, parts on hand, and service all year round. Our entire inventory is available to you online at DeerEquipment.com. c &B, proud to be your local John Deere dealer. Live Ticket TV continues to grow and bring you more sports coverage than ever before. And now, Live Ticket TV is happy to announce their partnership into college athletics with Dakota Wesleyan University. That's right, Tiger Nation, Live Ticket TV, and DWU have teamed up to bring you coverage of all home sporting activities for the Tigers. If you'd like to advertise during these sporting events, give Live Ticket TV a call. Dakota Wesleyan University Sports, now on Live Ticket TV. BNS Services LLC is your locally owned repair service center. We specialize in full service automotive, semi trailer, and small engine repair, along with tire services. Repair services range from a simple oil change to sharpening mower blades to a more complicated electrical diagnosis. Located at 38058 South Dakota Highway 34, look for us on the hill heading west out of town. Phone Cody Barber, 605 350 4293, and Arian Schooler, 605 770 9398. BNS Services LLC is a proud sponsor of Westington Springs Spartans. Athletic. Back here at Cadwell Park getting ready for the Wood Ducks versus the Mad Frogs here in Mitchell, South Dakota. My name is Spencer Buley and I'm alongside Keith Nimke for this one. Keith, about to get into our starting lineups as we see the ceremonial first pitch. Let's go ahead and start with the Minnow Mad Frogs. Take a look at the Minnow Mad Frogs as you mentioned. Spencer Buley coming in at 4 and 14. Manager Tom Sattler. The starting nine for them is, of course, a very common one if you follow the Metal Mad Frogs. Leading things off will be number five, Dylan Lair, out in left field, batting second, number four, Spencer Schultz, the first baseman. Batting third will be Macon Oplinger, the DH. Batting the cleanup spot, number 17, Connor Merriam, the catcher. Batting fifth, number 
three, A.J. Herbolt, the center fielder, batting six, number 15, Nick Ratzloff, the right fielder, batting seventh, number nine, Braden Sattler, the third baseman, batting eighth, number two, Bryce Sattler, the shortstop, and batting ninth, number 10, Tyler Miller, the second baseman, and longtime pitcher, pitching many games here at the state tournament as well, number 23, Doug Hall, gets the start on the bump today for the Menno Mad Frogs. Hall is statted at 0-4 so far on the season. So we'll see if he can work some of that veteran magic in this ball game. Go ahead and flip the script and look at the Humboldt Hartford Wood Ducks. Wood Ducks will lead things off with number five, Austin King, playing out in left field. In fact, Spence, if you look at it, both starting lineups, both first batter, number five, playing left field. If you want a little tidbit there, batting second, number 15, Braden Hur, the third baseman. Batting third will be number 27, Dawson Baker, the DH. Batting fourth, number 28, Braden Odegaard, the first baseman. Batting fifth, number 13, Brody Hur, the shortstop. Batting sixth, number two, Nathan Adrian, the second baseman. Batting seventh, number 13, Gage Nelson, the center fielder. Batting eighth, number 32, Race Whiting, the catcher. Batting ninth, the final spot, number four, Hamden McDonald, the right fielder, and getting the start on the bump today, number seven, Logan Larson. Those lineups brought to you by Shields. Shields carries world-class brands and backs every product they carry with their Shields guarantee. You can feel confident knowing you're purchasing the same footwear, apparel, and gear that professionals all rely on. Heath? Beautiful evening for some baseball. You're just checking out the weather. What's the report? Yeah, getting ready for first pitch here at Cadwell Park. Temperature is at 71 degrees. Spencer, I know earlier we saw a grand slam, which may be a little bit of a surprise as we are seeing a northwest wind blowing inside to Cadwell Park at 13 miles an hour. Gusting as high as 30. It can get a little breezy here, but winds will decrease. But certainly a cooler day, if you will, for kind of the first few days of August. Usually it's extremely hot around this time. If you missed it in pregame, this is game number five of the Class B State Amateur Tournament. Game number one went yesterday. That was Akron versus Wessington Springs. Wessington Springs got the win 10 to seven, so they will move on to the round of 16. Then we had Larchwood dominate Burke, 18 to three, the final score of that game. So Larchwood advances to play Wessington Springs. That game will be Sunday, August 11th at 5.30 p.m. Game three happened this morning at the 11 o'clock game, Lake Norton versus DeMock Emery, 7 to 2. Emery takes that one, advances to the round of 16, and we saw Castlewood defeat Tabor 7 to 5. Castlewood advances to play DeMock Emery Sunday, August 11th at 7:30 p.m. Heath, these two teams, seems like this game could kind of go either way. They've both struggled a little bit, but it should be a fun fun matchup to watch. Could go either way. You'd look at the Hartford, Humboldt, Wood Ducks, a team out of the Corn Belt League, when they kind of put the bracket together, you'd say maybe one team that would have a tough time getting out of it would be the Wood Ducks, but they certainly showed their strength, and as the famous saying goes, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish, and the Wood Ducks coming in to the state tournament with a lot of momentum, and for the Meadow Mad Frogs, a team that is always battling tough, they've been off for the past couple of years here at the state tournament, finally making it back, expect a good pitching performance from longtime pitcher Doug Hall. Should be a fun one tonight. First pitch coming your way, 5.32 p.m. this evening. Spencer, if I could break it down a little bit more, Doug Hall comes in 22 and two-thirds pitch. He's pitched in four games so far this season. You mentioned earlier an 0-1 record. Looking a little bit more at Doug Hall, ERA above 10, and his whip is at a 2.338. Hall quickly working ahead in the count here to Austin King, number five left fielder. Payoff on the way. This one's grounded to shortstop. Should be a quick first out. And the Minnow Mad Frogs start off clean. Yeah, nice little quick play there by Bryce Sattler, the Legion pickup player there for the Minnow Mad Frogs. You like when a Legion player like that, and that was a good, well, we saw 79ers team earlier this season down in Vermilion. A lot of great talent that they have on their squad. Sattler, one of those Legion pickup players, as you mentioned. Playing shortstop, one of the captains of the infield in the State Am tournament for the Menno Mad Frogs. And certainly a tough spot as a Legion player. You talk about uh, getting some of the most putouts would be the shortstop position, but he handled that cool like a cucumber on that first at bat. Second batter, Braden Herr, the third baseman. 1-1 one, one count. This one's going to fall just inside for ball number two.
Seen a lot of pitchers work quickly in this tournament. Hall working at a modest pace up there. By the way, if you're a longtime follower of the Wood Ducks on the opposite side, her comes in wearing number 15 today, traditionally wearing number 34 for the jerseys. And he has walked at his first at bat, so it puts our first runner on at the ball game. Hare will be at first, and that'll bring up number 27, Dawson Baker, the designated hitter for this Hartford Humble Wood Ducks team. Another one it might be a little bit of a theme here. Again, not wearing his traditional number of 27 coming into this uh, state tournament, if you will. Baker, another pickup player for this Wood Ducks team, batting 302. So rightfully hitting in the third position, one of the higher averages on this Wood Ducks team. Watch as the first one go by, strike number one. All deals, this one in the dirt. As you mentioned, a big pickup player, I think going back to that Corn Belt District Tournament, Madison was more of that easy favorite, if you will, looking at teams that you would expect to easily make it to the state tournament and a surprise team that didn't, and that team was loaded with a lot of great pitchers too. Runner goes, it's her, and this one driven into left field on the ground. Her, had he not slid, maybe have... Would have had an opportunity to go to third base. A little bit of hit and run situation, but it pays off either way. Her not paying, paying attention necessarily to what's going on there in the game. He was stealing second no matter what. Had no clue about the swing and hit because, as you mentioned, he slides in there with his knee, and by the time he gets up, it's being picked up out in left field. Dylan Lair certainly has a great arm. He could have probably gunned him down at third, so maybe great that he didn't advance, but also you maybe look back at that player and wonder what could have been. Definitely would have been a very close play at third had he gone. I don't think he would have gone him like you, Heath, but nonetheless, didn't really have his head on the ball. Either way, brings up Braden Odegaard, the first baseman, number 28, batting in the cleanup spot for the Wood Ducks. Here he's got two men on, one strike, one out. Second pitch of the at-bat, swing and a miss, in for strike number two. Six hits, or excuse me, no, I apologize. 12 hits for him in the ball game, 11 singles. He does have one home run. So he's either hitting a home run or a single if he's getting on base here. Heath mentioned we saw a grand slam in our last game. And here down goes Odegaard on three straight strikes. We talked about the whip his ERA, but what about the strikeouts for Doug Hall? It's not high. In fact, he's the lowest one when it comes to pitchers for the Mad, Metal Mad Frogs, only his 12th strikeout of the season. Gets his first one of the game. It's the Mad Frogs to two outs, and here he starts ahead in the count once again. So Hall doing a great job starting ahead, getting a lot of swings and misses early in the count. Brody Herr out there kind of blending in with the team as well for the Wood Ducks. Not quite wearing orange, but red certainly a close color. Second one on the way, 0-2 once again. As you mentioned, Doug Hall with his whip. He's going to give up some hits, but right now he's quickly working himself out of a runners on first and second base jam. Finding the zone here against Nathan Adrian. Runner going to third. This one fouled off towards the right side bleachers. You look at, uh, historically, when you talk about the outfield, you have the fastest guys out there, but I think one of the fastest outfields, if you will, be this Metal Mad Frogs team. So great former college players, and they can really catch up to the ball. So if you're the Wood Ducks, you got to make sure you place in a spot that it's going to be hard for them to get to. And correction on the batter, this is Brody Herr, not Nathan Adrian. So Herr, another Legion player for this Wood Ducks team. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Hare trying to stay alive. This one just inside. But good eye from her to watch it go by for ball number two. Deuces are wild here in the first. Runners on first and second. It's Odegaard and her. Her tried to advance just a couple pitches ago. He'll stay here. This one grounded to second base. Miller will collect it and flip it to second. Sattler's there. And that will retire the side. Couple men on for the Wood Ducks, but no run scored. We'll move to the bottom of the first here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV.
Dimmick Cheese has been making handmade artisan cheese for over 90 years and has over 25 flavors of cheese. Stop by the store for sampling of all the cheeses. The store also offers several South Dakota made products. And at the store, find Remedy Brewing on tap. Dimmick Cheese offers gift boxes and fundraisers are available. To find out more, go to the website, DimmickDairy.com or call 605 928 3833. And don't forget to check your local grocery store for their premium cheeses and cheese spreads. Dimmick Cheese. You are a dynamite contractor. Your younger brother Gary is a slightly less dynamite contractor, but together you make mom proud. Look at you two, and look at your crew. Brenda the Calculator Cutler, Bill the Drill Robinson, and then there's the new guy. New guy struggles with stairs, and that'll cost you. Lucky for you, you have IMT Business Insurance. Learn more at imtins.com. Be worry-free with IMT. Advanced Sunflower is your locally owned and operated sunflower processing company that buys all types of sunflowers for the edible and bird food industries. They market sunflowers domestically and internationally, so they have a wide range of options to get you the best price for your sunflowers. Most advanced sunflower contracts have an act of God clause, so you don't have to worry if Mother Nature takes a toll on your crop. Give Jared or Danny a call to get you the most profit out of your sunflowers. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by MDS Manufacturing. We make the loader better. MDS leads the way with quality in manufacturing, pricing integrity, and business development. Shout out to MDS Manufacturing. And thank you to all of our sponsors. Making this state tournament possible here for us. Moving into the bottom of the first. Visiting team, the Wood Ducks, stranded two runners on one hit in the top of the first, but Heath, always nice to see some action, getting some base runners out there in the opening inning. I think a great performance offensively and defensively. Great hits for the Wood Ducks, finding the gaps, moving the base runners early. That gives an indication that they can make things happen against Doug Hall. But then on the opposite side, when the routine ground balls happen for the Mad Frogs defensively, they took care of it nice and easily. You like to get into this game and be comfortable. I think, again, we saw it from both teams, and I expect a close one, just as you said at the beginning of the broadcast between these two teams. So leading off for the Minnow Mad Frogs will be number five, Dylan Lair, the left fielder. Watch the first pitch go by for a strike. On the mound, Logan Larson pitching for Hartford Humboldt. There's one thing about... Dylan Lair, get to talk to him uh, about uh, baseball all the time when it comes to dealing with advertising with him. But a uh, very passionate guy when it comes to baseball. And one of those guys as well, we talk about the middle Mad Frogs. You know, they didn't make the state turn the past couple of years. But Dylan Lair, he's always a pickup player. He's one of the first ones that everyone wants out of the South Central League because he's such a talented baseball player. And that's the reason why. Rips one right into the hot corner. But Brody Hare is there to snag it down the third base line. Great piece by Lair, but even better play by Hare at third base. Yeah, again, we talk about just getting warm, just being comfortable, and that one's a hard one to handle at the bottom of the first inning, but he did a great job putting that backhand down and making a play happen. This one quickly fouled off by Spencer Schultz, the first baseman, who steps in for the Minnow Mad Frogs. Larson, by the way, as you mentioned, on the bump today, has pitched 21 innings complete, 2-2 two and two for his record, a 5.5 ERA, a 1.5 whip. This one poked into left field. It's going to drop for a base hit, and Schultz will be the first man on for the Menno Mad Frogs. Spencer Schultz just takes the Sunday stroll down the first base line. He knew he had a simple single and would take that all day long. Nice little Texas leaguer to kind of get the game rolling for the Mad Frogs. Not really trying to do too much, just taking it in off the hands and right over the head of the shortstop her. So digging in now, number 24, Mackin Opplinger, the designated hitter. Watches the first one go by on the outside corner for strike number one. By the way, the Metal Mad Frog's one of those teams from the south. Central League that kind of had to go through the gauntlet just to get here. They played the maximum games you could in the South Central League uh, District Tournament, beating Irene, then beating Freeman to get here. But it all began with a loss against Lesterville, or I should say playing that the Lesterville game in that first round. Then they, again, had to go down and take 
defeating Irene and beating the Freeman Black Sox to get here. There's no easy path into the state amateur tournament. All 32 teams rightfully earning their spots to be here. Already seen a couple advance into the round of 16. A lot of exciting matchups still to come. The 2-1, this one's swung on. Nothing happening for Opplinger. Just mentioned for all the fans tuning in, maybe already what they've called up here in the broadcast booth and upset a team from the South Central League, the District Champs, the Tabor Bluebirds, a very good, good team. Uh, maybe didn't throw their ace of a pitcher like maybe some people think you should, and they get eliminated by Castle. What a good Ravens team. It was the last game to happen here. It was the 1 o'clock game that started well after 1, <laughs> but finished up before this one, so this one's starting on time, making everybody, pretty much everybody at Cadwell Park happy. The 3-2, this one up, and it'll put Opplinger on first and move Schultz over to second. So with one out, the Mad Frogs will have two men on base. Just like the Wood Ducks do, Menno is able to get runners on first and second. Now the question is, can you take advantage of it? Opposite side for the Wood Ducks, it goes into the defensive plays of, hey, we got to be starting to look for those double plays. But certainly going to be a, a tough spot here as Connor Merriam steps up the catcher, a very good hitter for Mental Mad Frogs. Watches the first one in the dirt. Nice stop behind the plate by Whiting. Outs all over the infield. Merriam, you mentioned, great hitter. Batting cleanup, hitting 290 so far on the season. Flares this one into right. And McDonald can't find it in the sun. And the runners will advance. In safely to first base is Merriam. And everyone moves around. McDonald just simply lost that one in the sun. Stood there like he was waiting for it. And then let it drop about 10 feet in front of him. And now we'll get a pinch hitter, or pinch runner here, excuse me. Kyle Monkvold will come on to run for the catcher, Merriam. And again, bases loaded now here in the bottom of the first for the Mad Frogs with just one out. A.J. steps up to the plate. He's got seven RBIs so far this season, 17 hits, including 14 singles and three doubles coming into the state tournament. A.J. can do it a lot of ways. He's got a lot of speed, the center fielder for this Mad Frogs team. Grounds one back up the middle. Going to be a tough play at short, but the play is made by Hare to get an out, but nonetheless, another RBI grounded in for A.J. Herbold. Yeah, you take that eighth RBI on this season. It doesn't always have to look pretty. It doesn't always have to come courtesy of a hit. Goes with the fielder's choice, and in the end, the Metal Mad Frogs take the lead in the bottom of the first. Advances Opplinger and Merriam to third and second, respectively, as well. So two more runners still in scoring position. As digging in now is Nick Ratzloff, the right fielder. Ratzloff, one thing about him, he's a hitter, but he really likes to swing for it. 17 strikeouts he had during the regular season does lead the Metal Mad Frogs in strikeouts. And this is one of those situations with runners on third and second and two outs. You'd love to put something in the play, try to get another run scored at least maybe even two. Doesn't need to do too much. Any single pretty much scores two runs. Going to ground this one down the first baseline, just foul. And if you're Nick there... You're happy about that because that was an easy first pitch out and you're hitting yourself going, gosh darn it, wish we had another opportunity, but God looks down from the heaven and grants him another one. Ratzloff now down 0-2 in the count. Again, two outs. Larson dealing with 0-2, curveball, not going to catch the outside of the plate, may have been a little high as well. I like what he's trying to do though, either get that outside corner or make the... Hitter try to chase one out of the zone. Those can always be tempting. I was mentioned for Ratzloff. He wants to go after him. Pokes this one down the third baseline. Foul as well. Ratzloff kind of was ahead on that last pitch. He grounded on the first baseline as well. So I agree with you. I like the I like the curveball. Kind of loop it in there on the outside corner. See if you can't get Ratzloff chasing. And besides that one ball that we saw just outside the zone, he's going. He's going. He's going. He wants to get a hit here for his team. One and two. Holds back on this one, and it's called for strike number three. Curveball on the inside corner, and it strands two, but not before the Minnow Mad Frogs 
can come away with one run. We head to the top of the second in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. A credit card that fits your lifestyle and saves you money. Why would you settle for anything less? A Dakota Land Federal Credit Union Visa will earn travel rewards, 1% cash back, and 9.90% annual percentage rate. The right rate and all the right features puts you right where you want to be. Stop by any convenient branch location or check us out online at dakotalandfcu.com. Dakota Land, federally insured by NCUA. Out here, you learn that to keep growing, you have to keep changing. CHS and the farmers and ranchers we serve know all about change, because together we've changed agriculture. That's why we're the largest farmer-owned cooperative in the country. So farmers own the system they count on, with advantages at every step. From innovative tools that help crops grow, to grain processing expertise, to energy solutions, we create connections to empower agriculture. Learn more at chsinc.com. Back here at Cadwell Park on Live Ticket TV in the great city of Mitchell, South Dakota, out here for the 2024 State Amateur Baseball Tournament. An exciting first inning so far. Minnow Mad Frogs lead it 1 0. But the Wood Ducks, in their first appearance at the plate, were able to put two runners on, unable to move them around and get a run in. I'll try to do that here. 0 1. This one grounded to second base. And a nice play over there by Nathan Adrian to retire the opening batter of the inning. Tyler Miller. Tyler Miller. Tyler Miller makes the great play over there at second for the Middle Mad Frogs. Love the whole entire sliding knee, almost like kind of a soccer goalie move or even hockey as well. You put that knee down and kick it out to make sure you stay in front of it and does a great job. And from there, it's a simple pickup and throw over to first. That's the beautiful thing about playing second base as well. You usually have a little bit more time fielding those ground balls to make the throw so you know that you can kind of crouch down in front of it. As long as you put a body on it, you've got a good chance at getting the out at first. The 1-0, breaking ball in for a strike to even out the count. Nelson at the plate. Watches this one on the outside. Good take. Ball number two. Gage Nelson, the center fielder for Hartford Humboldt. Grounds this one right back to Hall. And it'll be an easy play for him. Flips it over to Schultz. And Gage Nelson is retired. So a couple of easy outs here for Hall. A much easier inning so far than that top of the first. No official gun here, if you will, about how fast pitches come in, but Doug Hall may doesn't have the fastest pace when it comes to his pitches, but they're always those tempting pitches as batters. You're like, I'm going to step up. I'm going to smack this out of the park. It, it seems easy, but it's nothing like that. And with that, again, doesn't necessarily have a lot of pace, but Doug Hall is really good at placing it in the spot that he's trying to throw to. Very appealing to the batter, especially when it's coming out more closer to eye level. Like that one right there. Grounded to second. Miller is there. Over to Schultz. And a very quick three up, three down for the Menno Mad Frogs. We'll move to the bottom of the second after this on Live Ticket TV. Burke Livestock Auction is a family owned livestock marketing center in Burke, South Dakota. We are located in south central part of the state. Cattle sales are held weekly on Saturdays with approximately 65,000 of South Central South Dakota and North Central Nebraska's finest feeder and breeding cattle marketed annually. Mark your calendar for our September 21st fall calf and yearling sale. Sale starts at 9.30 with lunch to start at 11. Burke Livestock is a proud supporter of state amateur baseball. When it comes to sports bars, the Sports Center in Larchwood, Iowa has put themselves above the rest. They open bright and early, 7 a.m. on weekdays and 10 a.m. on weekends, so you can start your day off right with them. And speaking of starting your day off right, they have daily food specials that will have your taste buds jumping for joy. The best flatbread pizza in the area, top-notch burgers, and don't worry, they have the best salad as well. The Sports Center in Larchwood. If you haven't tried it yet, put it down as your next destination. 
Say there was a place, the perfect place for the everyday things you need to take care of around the house. The squeaky hinges and burned out bulbs, the toilets that run and faucets that don't. That perfect place wouldn't be a warehouse. It'd be just the right size. It would be an ace. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their stuff. Welcome to the Home Convenience Store. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Bottom third of the order due up here for the Minnow Mad Frog is in the bottom of the second. Sattler, Sattler, and Miller, the seven, eight, and nine hitters of the order after a very clean top half of the second fielding wise. Three ground outs in a row. Dig in here. See if they can't come up with another run to tack on to their lead. One nothing is the score. So it looked like a uh, Rice Whiting out there uh, quickly got out of his seat, had a quick conversation. A little bit of a different, of course, what you're used to throwing a pitcher in a catcher as Rice is a Legion pickup player, so have to kind of get make sure you're set. You understand all those signals and exactly what you want. Looks like there's already miscommunication as we start the second inning. Team chemistry and overlooks thing, especially in baseball. This one fouled away to make it an even count, two and two, to Sattler. Got to get those signals correct. You don't have the technology like MLB does. You just sit there with your little knee and push a button, and the guy hears it in his ear and what he wants. It's a whole different ball game. The 2-2. Two -two. This one going to be low and outside. Been told those little knee buttons, if you will. And tell the pitcher to throw 18 different types of pitches, and I don't think most pitchers have 18 different uh, pitches that he can throw. This one's in for strike number three, and Braden Sattler is sat down after the 2-2 pitch. One out for the Minnow Mad Frogs, or excuse me, the hum Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks. That's a mouthful. Two strikeouts now for Larson here in the ballgame. And he works ahead in the count here again. Gets Sat or excuse me, not Sattler. No, yes, Sattler. Bryce They're Sattler. both B. Sattler. They are. Braden Sattler and Bryce Sattler. The brothers. So the shortstop, the eight-hole hitter here. 0-2 oh count. You got to see Bryce earlier this season, Spencer. Did I? Half a million. Here he fouls this one back. It would have been the uh, controversial game, if you remember. Ah, for, yes. For the, yes. For the 79ers. Yes. On an alleged missed third base, if you will. The 0-2 to Sattler watches this one again, and a back-to-back -back strikeouts looking for Larson. Larson doing a great job. 30 pitches here now in the ball game, 19 in the strike zone. So finding his comfortability, if you will. Balls have been in play for the middle Mad Frogs. This bomb third so far has not been able to unlock what Larson is throwing. Working ahead here once again, starting off with a strike at the knees to Miller, the second baseman. Tyler Miller, the nine-hole hitter. Pops this one. And it's going to be in play, but losing it was the first baseman Odegaard. I thought it was out of play just the way Odegaard trotted over to the fence. Second but time now you can blame some type of weather playing a factor. Again, it looks like he might have lost that in the sun, but we'll also have to give a little bit of credit. You can see it up here in the broadcast booth. Look at the 420 mark, and it, you know don't really see much moving around, but as you get higher up the trees, and of course you can see the flag in deep center from where we're sitting, there's plenty of breeze and air moving up above that makes it harder for that ball to move around as it's coming down and for those outfielders to get a proper read on it. Three strikeouts looking, a hat trick for Logan Larson, and he retires the side just like that. End of the second, moving to the bottom of the third here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. 
What started out to be a small community celebration has grown into an attraction that draws literally thousands of people each year. Mark your calendars for June 19th, 20th, and 21st, 2025 for the 75th annual Tabor Check Days in Tabor, South Dakota. Check food, check music, and check hospitality await you in Tabor. Check Days is sponsored by the Tabor Chamber of Commerce and proudly supports the Tabor Bluebirds and Bonhomme High School Athletics. Sun Gold Sports is proud to call Mitchell and Huron home. With over 50 years of experience, we are here for all of your printing needs. Whether it's for your business, school, or personal, we are your one-stop custom shop. Screen printing, embroidery, vinyl, banners, trophies, awards, and so much more. Give Steph a call at 605-770-6829. Sun Gold Sports of Huron and Mitchell. We print t-shirts. Say there was a place, the perfect place for the everyday things you need to take care of around the house. The squeaky hinges and burned out bulbs. The toilets that run and faucets that don't. That perfect place wouldn't be a warehouse. It'd be just the right size. It would be an ace. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their stuff. Welcome to the Home Convenience Store. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Top of the third here in Mitchell, very quickly over the commercial break, Camden McDonald swings at the first pitch, flares it into right field, and we see our first successful play beyond first base in the outfield this afternoon. Able to corral it was the right fielder, Nick Ratzloff. And it's one down, 0-1 now to King. Back to the top of the order we are for the Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks. The 1-1 one, one here from Hall. King watches this one drop in for strike number two. King 0 for 1. And down here once again, this one outside evens it out to two and two. The payoff from Hall, this one way outside the zone, coming Hall, into King's head. Hall here so far in the game, up to 33 pitches so far. We talk always about that pitch count and where it's at here in the ball game. Uh, you like to see it that's not too high for Hall. Again, he has been extremely comfortable. Another strikeout for him. So the fourth strikeout in a row that we've seen, actually maybe more than that, because I believe we ended it on a strikeout in the top of the second. Yeah, it's actually back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Doug Hall. We just saw three from Larson, so five strikeouts here in the row for the ball game. And remember, we saw that top and bottom of the first where guys were actually getting on base either courtesy of hits or even walks. Another one flared out into right. Ratzloff hustling after it, unable to get there in time. But again, that's the speed I talked about going back to that first inning from this outfield for the Mental Mad Frogs, one of the fastest outfields. And they, they get it. It's going out, and the wind's going against him. But Ratzloff is going to take off after it. He wants to make a play happen, even if it's over in foul territory. To play the outfield at the amateur level, got to have some wheels, and Ratzloff has them. Second pitch grounded into the 5-6 hole. It'll be a base hit for Hare. So Braden is on base with two outs. Great diving play there by the young Bryce Sattler at the shortstop position. Just missed out on keeping that one in front of him. And if even he would have, I think it still would have been an extremely tough play to get it over to first. Takes a very, very elite shortstop to be able to make a backhand like that, get up and make the throw to first on time. So a great piece there. Now grounded to third base. This should be an easy play with two outs from Sattler, and it is, and that will retire the side. We head to the bottom of the third in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV.
Prairie Valley Farm Charlet is located in Platte. Since 1980, David has worked with his father, family, and hired men to provide bulls with the best health, management, selection, and genetics to produce a quality product to meet the customer's needs. Mark your calendar for their annual bull sale on the second Saturday of April. Check out their website at pvfcharlet.com or give David Mason a call for more information. Prairie Valley Farm Charlet is a proud supporter of all Black Panther School activities. Remember, U.S. beef, it's what's for dinner. Located in the heart of Mitchell, Blarney's is your one stop for mouthwatering food, refreshing drinks, and your latest sports action. Fans, it's state amateur baseball time, and Blarney's is your pre- and post-game destination. Whether you're finishing up the early game and need a spot to eat for lunch, or celebrating a late-night victory, stop in at Blarney's and keep the party going with cold, refreshing drinks. Blarney's Sports Bar and Grill, a proud supporter of the state amateur baseball tournament. From your innovative attachment solutions provider for over 40 years, MDS Manufacturing. One of a kind. Revolutionary. Game changing. MDS doesn't make the loader. MDS makes the loader better. Back to the top of the order here for the Meadow Mad Frogs. It's number five, Dylan Lair, the left fielder digging in. Bottom of the third inning. Mad Frogs still lead it one to zero. Started off with a very hit-filled first inning. Lots of action on the bases, but since then, a pair of strike or lots of strikeouts seen in the box. Grounded to second, and Lair almost able to beat it out, but That's a nice play by Adrian to throw over. That's the speed I talk about with Dylan Lair. That seems like it's just such a routine and simple out over there at first, and Lair was just inches off from getting to first. And it wasn't super softly hit either. It was no. a decent piece kind of towards the end of the bat, but still quickly up on Nathan Adrian over at second. But Lair still almost making a little infield hit. And if you can get Dylan Lair on, I know, of course, he didn't make it, but if you can get that leadoff batter, especially with Dylan, he is certainly going to start stealing, and he can make a lot of things happen quickly for the Mad Frogs when he's on the base. So Schultz digs in here. The first baseman has one of the two hits for the Mad Frogs. 2-0. and Head in the count. Going to find his pitch here. Doesn't get it there. That one's outside for ball number three. As we know, Schultz is a good batter as well. Over 20 hits this season, and he has gotten a hit in every single category except for the home run. This one inside, and they'll put him on in four straight pitches. So after a hat trick of backwards Ks in the last inning on the mound, Larson gives up his first base runner since the first inning. And that's what we know when it comes to the top of the order that we have seen change so often recently in baseball is you see your power hitters, your best guys that will be hitting first. And that's one, two, three in order. And that's what we're seeing right now with the Metal Mad Frogs. Opplinger quickly fouls this one down the right field line. A nice piece. Designated hitter, batting three hole. Strong hitter for this Mad Frogs team. Yeah, making... I've seen him plenty of times with Dylan Lair on base, maybe at second, even at first. If he can put one in the outfield, that's where you'll see Darren, Dylan take off. But now we see Schultz over there at first. So, if, again, Macon can get one into play, have a good chance of advancing the runner from first to third on the corner move. Schultz not quite the same speed as Dylan Lair, as Spencer Schultz is the first baseman for the Mad Frogs. Opplinger behind 0-2. Just keeps on battling, poking this one down the right field line. Well foul. Giving a lot of little kids action out there. And we see also when it comes to making Oppelinger, hits a lot when he gets his hits out to the left or even the center. He's only gotten two hits so far this season off to the right side of the field. He's been hitting the past two balls there, though. And he has hit here, upper shoulder blade. The old classic stinger. The Mad Frogs will put two men on once again. Just got to push some buttons, Spencer, by the way. You looked a little surprised when I 
I was. Beautiful he uh, hit <laughs> graphic there from Heath. Showed that Opplinger able to kind of put it from anywhere from pretty much anywhere. I mean, he has two hits out to the right only, but not like all of his hits were into left field. They were center, left center, down the left line. Impressive stats for him. This one fouled straight back. It's Connor Merriam, the catcher. Well, if you're enjoying those little spray charts of where the pitch is and Got hits are here. going, I'll give you another one here for Connor Merriam. It's spread out. He can basically put the ball to left, right, or down the center, and he is making plays happen. Has popped out a couple times outfield and, of course, does have a home run on his stats, but uh, impressive that he's able to put the ball kind of anywhere into play for the middle Mad Frogs. He's got the other hit in this ball game for the Mad Frogs. Looking for another one here. Instead, watches the second strike go by. One and two is the count. One out. Runners on first and second. A hit here from Merriam. Likely scores one and puts runners on scoring position. But instead, strikeout swinging. Couldn't get to the outside pitch. And he is retired on four pitches. And that one for Larson just out of the zone that hugs that strike zone where you're trying to get the batter to chase after, and that's exactly what Merriam did. Thought he had it in the spot he wanted to. It would have been off the end of the bat if he would have been able to make contact. Had to lean into it, but just missed it. It's a great pitch from Larson to add another strikeout to the tally. A.J. Herbolt, the center fielder, stepping in now. Watch the first one go by for a ball. This one is going to be inside to make it 2-0. and oh. Spencer, don't forget, you also get to see a little orange on orange. And back-to-back -back games, the Wood Ducks wear orange. And I believe I was told Elk Point, a traditionally orange baseball team, added a second-colored jersey. I think they're going to be wearing their whites tonight. Ground ball to Adrian, and that will end the inning. Easy play there for him at second base. Top of the fourth, coming up next here on Live Ticket TV warms up, so does our time outside. If you've been putting off your next home project, then Elite Renovations in Platt and Mitchell is ready to help. If you're looking to upgrade or update your roof, siding, windows, doors, and decking, they've got you covered. Interior trim, flooring, cabinets, tile, or drywall, they got the crews. Book a free consultation to discuss your options. Visit their website at EliteReno-SD.com to get started with your summer project. The One Stop in Redfield is a friendly, family-owned business. We carry hot stuff, pizza, sandwiches, and more. Before you take a trip, or if you're just out and about, stop by and fuel up with Sinclair Gasoline from E30 to E85. Use your Dino app for extra savings and your pump and save card for free stuff. Don't forget to visit the automatic car wash for that spotless shine. One Stop in Redfield is a proud supporter of all school sports and activities. Triatel is a telecommunications company that serves over 10 small communities. And just because you live in a small community doesn't mean that you can't get good service. For me, it's really important to be able to work remotely here in the country. If you live in the uh, Triatel service area and you're looking for a good, reliable, high-speed internet connection, we've served our members for 65 years and we're going to be serving you long into the future. Hey farmers, don't you? Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Hanky Tractor Repair. They are a leading dealer in ATV and UTV sales in the region. They're located 20 miles south of Mitchell on Highway 37. Right away here in the top of the fourth, we get our first out. Heath, what'd you see there? Yeah, just uh, Odegaard puts one there on the ground over to the shortstop and just routine play for the Menno Mad Frogs as we continue to see um, great plays from Menno Mad Frogs defensively so far in this game. I wish I was lying to you when I tell you that half of your sponsor cards just fell out. Well, that's okay. I know when I was punching holes into them, they thought they might fall out a little bit, but that's okay. Well, here you go. There's always a solution <laughs> to every problem in this world, and I'll give you a quick solution. There it is. Clipped them together just so you don't have everything falling everywhere and there's a disaster. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
3-0 count here to Herr. This one inside, four straight balls, puts Hare on. He doesn't have anything on that. Ah. Some teams, okay. some teams don't keep. You know, there's two hairs, obviously. So I was trying to, trying to click there, see if it would very quickly give it to me. It was Brody. It was Brody. By the way. Yes, it was. Different color jersey. Right. <laughs> right. Nathan Adrian stepping in now to bat for the Wood Ducks. 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Second baseman played a clean game over there in the field. Trying to add a hit to his stats here. Runner going. This one flared out into right. Going to be trouble for the Wood Ducks. Ratzloff catches it, but no play at first base. As Brody Hare was able to get back in time. May have been a Designed hit and run, but Hare may also just have the green light. Pretty quick guy over there. Doug Hall gets his second out here in this top fourth. He averages just over five innings pitched in his performances, so we're getting kind of to his mark. Now, don't get me wrong, the pitch count's extremely low. You want Doug Hall, the way he's pitched, to go very long into this game, but uh, I wonder if this continues to progress on. If maybe the Wood Ducks can't find something offensively and start to pick uh, Doug Hall a bit. And again, we also noticed with Doug, he's not a guy that looks over to first a lot. So again, this is that opportunity when the Wood Ducks get somebody aboard to steal. Wouldn't be surprised to see Brody Hare take off. The shortstop has a lot of speed over there at first. And almost picked off there. As you said, Doug kind of Hall fell asleep. Doug Hall hears us up here and says, all right, I'll look over there yes, he and does. make an attempt to make sure Brody stays honest at first. And maybe that makes his pickoff moves even more effective as Hare looked like he kind of fell asleep on Doug Hall. The 1-0 on the way. This one over the head of Nelson. Seen a couple wild pitches from Hall kind of trail over the batter's box. Get a lot of credit to Miriam as well, the catcher there that keeps it in front of him as he had to hop up from the squat position quickly to make sure that didn't hit the back wall. Otherwise, Brody is easily over at second. Brody's going here. Throw might be in time, but it's mishandled by Sattler at shortstop. Bryce Sattler, the Legion player, just couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, that one just above Doug Hall's head as well. That one had to be on a rope from Merriam, and he does exactly what he needed to. It was just Miller who couldn't apply the tag as he watched it trail out of his glove. Showing bunt here is Nelson. It's 3-0, probably was never going to bunt. But might as well try to throw the pitcher off while you can. But going back to that steal, Hare might have been thrown out. Didn't even slide. Nope. Just kind of walked on in to second base, a little bit surprising there. No, I, I think easily, if again, Miller doesn't drop that, Merriam, great throw from the catcher's spot. Out number three on the pickoff attempt, if just able to hold on to it in the glove. So we'll look for Merriam to get active, trying to catch somebody stealing this game. The 3-2, this one up, and it'll put Gage Nelson on first base to put outs everywhere in the infield. Two outs so far. When it comes to Doug Hall, that is now the 18th batter. He has walked so far this season. Again, we go back to giving you the full stats of his rundown in the uh, first inning. He has walked more batters than he has struck out. So Definitely struggles to find the zone, and when he does so, it's usually in bulk numbers. Here, continuing to struggle. This one way up to Whiting. Pitch count getting higher and higher as well. 53 pitches again, top of the fourth. I don't mind that number whatsoever. You're going to probably say most pitchers aren't going the full distance, but it's starting to creep up high on it. Ground ball handled by Sattler, and that will put an end to another dangerous inning. The Wood Ducks threaten. The Menno Mad Frogs walk away untouched. one nothing. still your score. We're through three and a half, bottom of the fourth, coming up next here on Live Ticket TV. The time or the means to haul your corn to market? Contact Derek or Phil at Nugent Energy. They are receiving corn six days a week, and every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. is Farmers Only Haul Day. Located in Marion, South Dakota, Nugent Energy also sells distillers and corn oil. 
Call 605-648-2100 for all your corn needs. And check out their website at NewGenMarion.com. That's N-U-G-E-N-Marion.com. A better you starts closer to home with people who understand your way of life and belong to your community. Primary care providers at Horizon Health know you and know how to help you stay well. We're here to keep you healthy and care for you through every stage of life so you can keep doing what you love and make every day a better one. Schedule an appointment at horizonhealthcare.org. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. It might be time for you to strong. Back here at Cadwell Park in Mitchell, South Dakota, Nick Ratzloff digging in for the Menno Mat Frogs. The right fielder, six hole leading it off here in the bottom of the fourth. One nothing. Mat Frogs still lead over the Wood Ducks. Wood Ducks on the top of the fourth, able to put a couple runners on, but unable to advance anyone to third base. So back on the defensive side, they are. 1-0, swinging is Ratzloff. Going back to the top of the fourth, as you mentioned there, Spencer, it's the second time now that we've seen the Wood Ducks get multiple runners on the bags, so they have left a total of five stranded so far here in the ball game without scoring anything. This one grounded to second base. Adrian will handle once again and throws out Ratzloff for an easy first out of the inning. Me and Heath are making a friend up here in the broadcast booth. <laughs> As we stare out the window at our new friend. Did you like that play? Oh, good play. We get the thumb of approval, it looks like, maybe. Either way, digging in, Braden Sattler, the third baseman. Seven hole for the Minnow Mad Frogs. 0 for 1. Just a pair of hits for both teams. Seen a lot of action on the base pass, as we mentioned. This one's skied just to the left of third base. Tracking on the left side? No, we will not have a play. Braden Hare was unable to get there. It was certainly in play. But just dropped a couple feet in front of Hare. Looked like he didn't quite have a good read on it. Not quite for sure where he was at on the dugout as well. He felt the sand. And, or I should say the dirt there, right there in the dugout, and you know you're getting close, and there is a step that kind of reaches out. You don't want to hit that, otherwise you're going to fall right down in there. But going back to Sattler, for Braden, he's a guy that hits a lot to the left. Only one hit this season that went to the right. So looking to add one however he can here with one out. He's down 1-2 in the count. Larson dealing. Slow ground ball to third base. Hare with the chance to redeem himself after the foul ball and is unable to do so. Bobbles it, and it puts Sattler on for the Mad Frogs. First error of the ball game that we see. and They go back for Harry. Certainly want to make something happen on the foul ball. You can understand why you don't make the play, but on that one, it's got to be routine, as we always say. Of course, the throw from third to first isn't necessarily the easiest, but that one might be one you look back and wish you can have if you're the Wood Ducks, especially if Menno's able to get some offense going. So we'll keep an eye here on Sattler at first base. Haven't seen a ton of tick pickoff moves, excuse me, throughout this game. But now brother, Bryce Sattler, the shortstop, Legion player for this Menno Mad Frogs team in the box. Shows bunt here. And he did not go. It is not a strike. Pretty late pullback there from Sattler. Gets away with it. Makes the count 1-1. One one. As you mentioned, you kind of wonder if Sattler might steal or not only one stolen base for him throughout this season. So, more than likely, no. But you never know when you get to the state tournament. Never know indeed. 
But I imagine that Larson probably knows that. Probably won't see many pickoff moves over to that side. Here's Bryce Sattler swinging and missing for strike number three. Down on strikes, he'll be 0 for 2 on the afternoon. I'll bring up the second baseman, number 10, Tyler Miller. Miller, also without a hit on the evening. By the way, you talk about stolen bases for the Mental Mad Frogs. 20 of them throughout the season. 10 of them, or half if you will, come from Dylan Lair. So an extremely impressive stat from Dylan Lair. It's a guy they love to have on base, and he is swinging in the on-deck circle right now, wearing the stirrups over there. Big fan of the stirrups, Heath. What about you? I do enjoy them, yes. Wore them back in my day. <laughs> the 1-1, this one in for a strike. So Miller will fall behind, 1-2. and two. Went down through the strikeout last time up to bat. This one driven to center field. Going to be right at Nelson, who will come in and easily make the play to end the inning. We'll move to the top of the fifth after this here on Live Ticket TV. We consider leasing bowls from Jorgensen Land and Cattle. Here's Cody. Well, it's, it's a really good option to acquire some excellent genetics uh, for an affordable price. Uh, it's become really popular. When you first hear about leaf bowls, sometimes it may frighten a person. So that this is a different ball game. You know, there's a there's a genetic program behind these bowls. These are bowls that, that have a genetic program and really are designed genetically to very nice calves. Call 1-800-548-BOWL. At Lesterville Feed and Grain, they pride themselves on offering top-notch products at competitive prices. Whether you're looking for feed for your livestock or grains for your crops, they have you covered. And with their market bids, you can rest easy knowing you're getting the best deal possible. But it's not just about the products, it's about the service. Their knowledgeable staff is there to help answer any questions you may have and provide expert advice to help you succeed in your farming endeavors. Shields All Sports Store is your one stop for everything outdoors with local experts eager to guide you through the widest selection of brands. Your one stop for exercise gear to get working out or fashions for going out. And your one stop for footwear in your size, your style, yours to take home today. Shields, employee owned, community minded and like no place you've ever shopped before. Dr. Kelly Tobin. Moving along rather quickly here in Mitchell, South Dakota, here at Cadwell Park. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Spencer Buehling. I'm alongside Keith Nimke as Camden McDonald jumps out the wave. Uh, fastball inside. Two and one is the count. Top of the fifth inning. McDonald, the leadoff hitter here. Nine hole for the Wood Ducks. Swing and a miss for strike at number two. Evens out the count. Two and two to the right fielder. Hall dealing. This one hit right back at him, and it'll be through for a base hit for Camden McDonald and the first batter aboard for the Wood Ducks. Hall, of course, a difficult play to make there as the pitcher on the comebacker. Did a great job of getting his glove down, just couldn't quite close it completely in time to catch the ball, and it just... Instead of taking maybe a weird deflection, sometimes like we see, it just kept on going straight on through for the base hit. So we're back to the top of the order with Austin King, who shows bunt here. Back pick to first base. Just not in time. Very close. But McDonald able to dive back in there on the backside of the bag. You can see it on the replay. A great back pick by Miriam, who's already been showing off the arm throughout this game. But McDonald able to get back safely. King showing bunt again. It's a great one down the first baseline. Hall trying to field it. It is just in time to get King. But a job well done. Almost turned it in to a little infield hit there. But Hall, the mobile man on the mound, able to retire King. So after the sacrifice bunt, McDonald stands on second base. 
One out for the Wood Ducks. Braden Hare, the third baseman, steps in. 0 for 2 on the evening. Sween at the first one, drives it in the right field. This might score McDonald being waved around third. We'll have a play at the plate. And McDonald is well past it. The Wood Ducks tie it up at one apiece off the single from Braden Hare. The pickoff there as they try to bring it in, it was cut off. You might look back at it. Did not certainly look like it was going to be on a line to make it happen, but uh, a great single there from McDonald to bring in the RBI and tie this one up at one apiece. Yeah, I think the throw kind of had to be cut off from Ratzloff in right field. It was going to take Merriam way to his left and certainly not allow a play at the plate. But nonetheless, credit Hare. Great piece of hitting, driving one into right field. Brings up Dawson Baker, one for two on the evening. First pitch here, just up for ball number one. Still just one out. We're all tied up here at one apiece. Baker takes just inside. So now we see Hall kind of struggling again to find the strike zone. And it can go back to my previous comment there in the top of the fourth. This is where we usually see Doug Hall exit out of games. This is kind of where his average is at, the length he is able to go in a baseball game. Could be fatigue, or it could just be simply the more hitters see him, the more they're able to dial it in. A smart take here as easily stealing second is Braden Hare. And realistically, that was the worst throw that we have seen from Merriam at the catcher's position, and that was still in a great spot, but a great stolen base there for the Wood Ducks. Now their fourth stolen base of the ball game. And again, a smart take by Baker. That one was right over the meat of the plate, but able to hang the bat on his shoulder and let Hare get into scoring position. So now if Baker gets a single, it'll likely drive in Hare from second base. Hall down in the count, three and one. Deals here, this one well outside, and Baker is put on. And we are going to have a meeting at the mound. First one of the day for Hall. Trey Christensen is currently warming up in the bullpen. He's the pickup player from the Freeman Black Sox. It was the Metal Mad Frogs who actually beat the Freeman Black Sox to get here to this uh, state tournament. But he's been warming up. Again, going back to what we said about Doug Hall, up to 67 pitches here. He's walked in the better putting runners now on first and second. I think this has to be a conversation of just simply working for a, the double play. If it's on the ground, how do we make this happen? Let's get the out. Again, so many, often we say up in the broadcast booth, we like the strikeout, but again, Doug Hall statistically doesn't throw a lot of strikeouts, just 13 so far this entire season. That's with the state tournament um, combined with it. So, Again, you're going to be looking more defensively to get it done, but the Metal Mad Frogs got to be aware if you're Tom Sattler, the manager as well, don't want this one to get out of a hurry. It's still right there at 1-1. You would like to get out of this inning without giving up any more damage. It's going to be a tough one for Doug Hall to get out of as Braden Odegaard takes to the right-hander's batter's box, hitting 344 on the season. He's got the best average of the players that are routinely in this lineup for the Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks. Hits cleanup for a reason. He's got two men on here, first and second. Swings underneath this one, and he falls behind 0-2. So Doug Hall found the zone once again. One out for the Meadow Mad Frogs. Outs everywhere in the infield. Runner going to third. This one poked out into right field. If it stays fair, it's good, and it's on the line for a base hit. Odegaard's going to take second. Rounds it, looks for third. Will stay at second, but both runners come across. Baker coming all the way around from first base, and the Wood Ducks open it up with a two-run lead, 3-1 to one now. That's what you want to avoid if you're the Mental Mad Frogs, but have to give a lot of credit to Odegaard. 
that one just found the line to stay fair and just can't get placed, if you will, any better than that. Um, if you're, if you're Baker, or excuse me, Odegaard there to make the play happen. And that's why Odegaard has such a high average. Didn't try to do too much with the outside pitch. Just pokes it right over the head of Schultz at first base. Almost turned it into a triple. Just didn't have enough power on the hit. But nonetheless, the cleanup does his job and two more RBIs for Braden Odegaard. It's Brody Herr, the Legion ball player, shortstop for this team. By the way, Caleb Pressler is now going back to talk to Trey Christensen in the bullpen for the Metal Mad Frogs. I'm guessing at this point it's going to be not too much longer before we're going to see Christensen enter into the ball game. Probably one of those hurry up conversations. Kind of, hey, let's go ahead and get this thing moving along. Looking to come in for relief. This one flared out into shallow right field. It might be trouble if it stays fair, but it is well foul. Rolling to the fence. So to bring the count to one ball and two strikes. Hare 0 for 1. Reached base one time so far this game. The 1 2 from Hall. This one just inside. Seems to be one of Hall's misses today, that inside pitch. Unable to get it called most of the time. 2 2. Odegaard on second. 2-2 from Hall. Another one inside. This one low as well. It looks like Christensen has come in from the bullpen, so likely this will be the last batter that Doug Hall faces, especially if Hare's able to get on base. And this one lined into left field in the 5-6 hole. Being waved around is Odegaard. We'll have a play at the plate, but not in time. And that also allows Hare to advance to second base, and they'll trade positions and add another run on for the Wood Ducks. Great single by Brody Hare, driving in the RBI. A little surprise there that it was cut off, or maybe not a hard throw, I should say, from Dar Dylan Lair out and left. I thought he might sling that into home to try to get the runner out. I think he had at least maybe an opportunity to have a play against Odegaard, but it was never thrown there as he went to Bryce Sattler, the third baseman, and by the time the relay came in, it was never going to be close. Sattler kind of bobbled it over there at third. This one caught at second and not in time to Sattler, who was covering second. Almost a backdoor double play, but a great catch nonetheless by Tyler Miller, the second baseman. And once again, another hard hit ball on Hall. Important out there to get for the Metal Mad Frogs and Doug Hall as his pitch count is now up to 71. I have a feeling that the Metal Mad Frogs would like him to finish this inning off if he can, give him five innings. Five innings, three runs in the ball game. You're not disappointed. Yeah, sure, all earned has walked four, but certainly, or I should say four runs scored, uh, all earned, but uh, not a bad performance. But I think the Mad Frogs at this point would like to get him through this inning. This one skied into left field. Should be a pretty routine play for Lair out and left. And it is. Doug Hall able to finish out the inning, but it is likely the end of his afternoon. We'll move on to the bottom of the fifth after this here on Live Ticket TV. Staff at Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic are proud supporters of high school athletics. When it comes to large and small animal health, look to Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. They understand how important your livestock is to you and will give you service that you can depend on. Call 539-1040. That's 539-1040. Rolling Hills is located on Dakota Avenue across from Farm Bureau in Wessington Springs. Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need 
the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home. Now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. The heart of farming season is coming up, and Caton International is your KHIH dealer in Crofton, Nebraska. Caton International offers top-notch parts and service to keep your equipment running smoothly all season long. Their team of experts is there to help with any maintenance or repairs you may need, so you can focus on what you do best, farming. And don't forget to check out their website for the latest deals and promotions. Whether you're in the market for a new piece of equipment or just need some replacement parts, Caton International has you. Back here at Cadwell Park, due up for the Minnow Mad Frogs here in the bottom of the fifth. It's Lair at the plate. Following him will be Schultz and then Opplinger to follow out the 1-2-3 order. This is a great spot for the Minnow Mad Frogs to answer the four runs that were put up by the Wood Ducks there in the top of the fifth. Hard of the lineup, Dylan Lair 0 for 2. He has hit the ball both times. He can get it into play, and this is a big spot for him. Been talking about how badly they want him on base. Likely not going to happen here. This one flared out into center. And Hairbolt there to make the play. He's going to run the bases while he's at it as he trots his way around third. But for Dylan Lair, 0 for 3 for him here in the ballgame. I know he's going to be frustrated with himself. But, uh, yeah, he got to make something happen here for the Mental Mad Frogs. Have not got really much offense going since dating back all the way to the bottom of the first, if you will. We're at the top of the order, by the way. Spencer Schultz, the two-hole. Dylan Lair, the leadoff. So the third cycle through here. Schultz, the first baseman. Watches this one go by for ball number one. We talked about Doug Hall and his average of going length. Larson's also at his average length that he pitches in ball games. So... 70, or I should say just above uh, 60 pitches for him so far. He's looking comfortable, but you would like to see him just continue to get the puts out through defense like this. There it was, a ground ball to shortstop. It's Hare making the put out. Two outs now in the inning. Larson being efficient up on the mound. So it'll bring up the three hole. Mack and Opplinger. Designated hitter for this Mad Frogs team. 0 for 2. He's going to ground it right Oof. back to shortstop. Hare a chance to make another play, and he does so. Three easy outs, and Larson is pretty hyped up heading back to the dugout. All the momentum with the Wood Ducks as we head to the bottom of the sixth here on Live Ticket TV. Cover. We travel in packs. Fearless first-timers and go-getters, sightseers and mudslingers, trail conquerors and adrenaline junkies. We believe great rides deserve great company. And wherever the ride takes us, there's always room for one more. Experience the enduring legacy of Castlewood Farms Elevator, a farmer-owned cooperative that has served the ag community for more than a century. Dedicated to enhancing efficiency and offering superior services, they provide a comprehensive range of crop nutrition, protection products, commercial fertilizer, and livestock feed. Visit CastlewoodElevator.com or give them a call today. Your ultimate destination for agriculture needs is Castlewood Farmers Elevator. Discover a piece of Americana at Cone's Corner, a renowned 1920s rural gas station turned firearm haven in the upper Midwest. Since 2004, the updated store has preserved nostalgia with gas pumps and snacks for travelers alongside a selection of 2,500 firearms. Purchase in-store or through Charlie for global delivery. They buy single guns, entire collections, and offer trades. Whether you're a collector or looking to sell, they've got you covered. Cone's Corner, proud sponsor of Castlewood Youth Athletics and Events. At Heartland State Bank, our customers are at the center of everything we do. Heartland State Bank is a family-owned community bank and here for you. We have an experienced lending staff for fast, local decisions. Heartland State Bank offers competitive rates and is proud to provide uptown services with a hometown touch. With four locations in Redfield, 
Tulare, Wessington, and Highmore, we aspire to support the communities we live and work in. Heartland State Bank, member FDIC. Trey Christensen, the pickup from Freeman, will take the mound here for the Minnow Mad Frogs as we are in the top of the sixth inning here in Mitchell. Four to one. The Wood Ducks lead it after that explosive top of the fifth. See if they can't continue rolling with the momentum. They'll try and get after Trey Christensen here early. Second pitch on the way. This one popped up over towards the dugout of the Wood Ducks. And that one is out of play. So it'll be a one and one count to Whiting. The catcher is 0 for 2 so far here on the evening. As the sun peeks out from behind the clouds. This one in for a called strike, 1 and 2. By the way, Doug Hall for the game. Five innings complete for him. Gave up six hits, four runs, all earned. Struck out four, or excuse me, walked four, struck out two through 79 pitches in the ball game. Aside from that fifth inning, really a great outing from Doug Hall. Struggled a bit to find the strike zone. Gave up four runs on six hits. But overall, not a bad evening aside from that fifth inning. The 1-2 is in the dirt, evening it out at two apiece. Whiting got some power, being the catcher, of course. Big swing on this one. It's fouled out into the right side of the park. We'll do the 2-2 again. Christensen. Almost got him swinging, but this one fouled straight back. Christensen is considered the ace for the Freeman Black Sox. Played in nine games, including seven that he started, went three and four during his time. Gave up 62 hits, struck out 31. Has a deal of a 4.25 ERA and a whip of 1.5. So... When you talk about a pitcher coming in to help out the team as a pickup player, this is certainly a great pickup player for the Mental Mad Frogs. Obviously looking for your best pitcher here, and he shows it off there. Called strike three to Whiting the catcher, and he strikes out the first batter he sees. So third two strikeouts in total for him this season. The second uh, leader, if you will, for the Black Sox when it comes to strikeouts. The only thing that maybe glares when it comes to Christensen has walked 19. Again, going back to what he's done this season, he's given up 62 hits. That's miles ahead of everyone that was on the Black Sox team. First pitch fouled away here. It's McDonald, the right fielder. The 0-1 from Christensen. Drops this one on the inside part of the plate. Works ahead, 0-2 count here to Camden McDonald, the right fielder. Looking for a back-to-back -back strikeout debut, but instead he'll take that, line out to first base. Schultz is able to handle it for the second out of the inning. You'd love to see it if you're Christensen coming on and getting the quick outs for his uh, team for the Mental Mad Frogs. The strikeout and then a simple play there by Spencer Schultz. Again, this Mental Mad Frogs team, just got to keep the Wood Ducks off the board. They're right there within striking distance, trailing by three. Nine innings is a lot of baseball to play. Already seen throughout this tournament, it's a game of momentum changes. The Wood Ducks had it in the fifth. But if they go three up, three down here, you might start to see some of that momentum creep back with the Minnow Mad Frog. Of course, it'll be all about the bats. Going to have to score three. And you talked about momentum. We saw that crazy against the Akron Rebels and Westington Springs Owls in game one of the state tournament here. Momentum just swing back and forth between those two teams. Eventually the Owls get in the win. That one right between the legs of Sattler. An uncharacteristic error over at shortstop. He's played a pretty clean game over there, but lets that one through. Second error now of the ball game for the Mental Mad Frogs. And we see so often offenses are able to strike even with two outs. 
This is one of those spots that, again, it's simple routine that you hope you're not looking back in five minutes from now and saying that should have been out number three. And it's one of those plays that kind of kills the momentum of your team as now we get another line shot into the outfield. This one's going to drop for a base hit. Nobody will try for third base. But now Hare and King are aboard for the Wood Ducks. And Heath, this is exactly what you're just hitting on. Anybody can strike with two outs. And now the momentum right back with the Wood Ducks. Even if they go out of this inning scoreless, it still feels like they're dominating this ballgame. And all of a sudden, we talk about Christensen coming off of the Metal Mad Frogs, a pickup player from the Freeman Black Sox. There's a reason we pick him up because we trust in his abilities. We like him as a player. He's one of the star players for that Black Sox team. Opposite side, now you bring up Baker from Madison, who is another star player, power hitter, one of the leading hitters for Madison. Great position with runners now on first and second. Baker, three hole, chases this one way outside. He wanted it. He did. He's hungry. This is an aggressive Wood Ducks hitting team, but in kind of the meat of the lineup here. So Christensen has his work cut out for him to try and get this third out. Ahead in the count, 0-1 here. Baker golfs this one out into shallow left. Sattler is there and able to make the play on the third baseline to retire the side. Not before the Wood Ducks get two runners on, but they strand them both. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. Seemed like the smallest town in South Dakota, so how could it have everything you need when you may find yourself in the middle of nowhere? But at Canova Service Center, whatever you may need in the middle of nowhere, that's where they are. Fencing, lumberyard, hardware, oil changes, tire sales, and repair. Rental equipment, feed bunks, cattle shelters, convenience store, and more. So no, you're not in the middle of nowhere. It's the Canova Service Center. We're your local one-stop shop. This is Angela, owner and operator of Amcota Farm and Home Center. From the DIYers, fixer-uppers, to contractors, we have what you need to get the job done. Building supplies, Valspar paint, and tools. Crystal X tubs, fencing supplies, and bog boots for your farm needs. We know how busy life can get. We offer delivery to make your life easier. Amcota Farm and Home Center on Dakota Avenue in Westington Springs. Big city value. If you love being outside, solving problems, and working with your hands, apply now at James Valley Landscape Solutions. James Valley offers on-the-job training in all aspects of the green industry with modern equipment and technology and competitive pay. Benefits include overtime pay, health care, dental, vision, and more. Apply now at jamesvalleylandscape.com or in person at 600 West Spruce, in Mitchell. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Agronomy Plus, offering Agronomy 365, which gives life information, live information, excuse me, which results in more profitable return in crops for you. Three locations across the Mitchell area. Talk to Zach today from Agronomy Plus. He's doing well. Great to hear. Agronomy Plus, shout out for making this possible for us. Bottom of the sixth here in Mitchell. Four to one. The Wood Ducks still lead it over the Mad Frogs. Just two innings of scoring so far for both of these teams. Four runs came in the top of the fifth for the Wood Ducks. And then for the Mad Dogs, they scored one in the bottom of the first to open the ball game and have nothing since. Seven hits for the Wood Ducks. Two hits for the Mad Frogs. This one grounded to second base and unable to corral it is Nathan Adrian. Mad Frogs, excuse me. Heath has let me know that I said Mad Dogs. Did I say Mad Dogs? It is kind of funny. Well, no good. Mad Frogs, either way, for the Mad Frogs. Runner on first. We actually get a pinch runner now. It's number 27 coming in. Kyle Monkvold pinch ran earlier in this ball game as Merriam, the catcher, is aboard. First pitch to Harebolt over the plate for a strike. This one driven right back up the middle and another base hit 
for the Mad Frogs. Larson up to 78 pitches now. Again, we talked earlier about the distance he's able to go. Average is right around five innings. We're now here in the bottom of the sixth, so you've hit your average, if you will. And now we gotta see if they don't decide to make a few changes or they keep going. But for the Mental Mad Frogs, all of a sudden, two batters, guys on first and second, looking good for the Mad Frogs to get back into it. Outs all over the infield, of course. So a chance for Larson to get out of this if he can get a ground ball or the Wood Ducks want it. Ratzloff at the plate, 0 for 2 on the evening. He's showing bunt here. This one foul tipped. Whiting unable to handle it, but it won't matter. Dead ball, obviously. Ratzloff shows bunt once more. This one up, he'll let it go for another ball. Two and one is the count. Ratzloff hitting just 179. Not super surprised to see the Mad Frogs play some small ball with him. He pops this bunt straight up, right back to the catcher. It'll be an easy out for Whiting behind the plate. Just like that, that's a huge out for Larson. Boosts the confidence a little bit. And now obviously allow the double play up the middle to end the inning or even third base, second base, third base, first base. Double plays everywhere, outs everywhere. On the opposite side, if you're Braden Sattler stepping up to bat, six RBIs here for the season, including 13 hits that he does have. Big moment for the Mad Frogs. All right, again, having your first two batters reach on an error and a hit. Three total hits for the ball game. Momentum. We always talk about that word. This is a spot where the Mad Frogs could grab it, but got to have Bryce make something, or excuse me, pray to make something happen before his younger brother Bryce steps up. And no doubt if Larson's able to work his way out of this jam, he is going to have all the confidence in the world taking the mound once again next inning. This one in the dirt, great stop behind the plate by Whiting. Again, one of the pickup players for this Wood Ducks team. Done very well behind the plate. We've seen some very good catching across the board in this evening game. Legion. Legion player. I guess there is a technical difference there. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout for Larson. And just like that, he's put two away with two men on. So again, we see the Mad Frogs struggling to move runners around, struggling to execute small ball, and struggling to bring any runs in. It'll be the shortstop. This one fouled away. Yeah, Bryce Sattler now going to step up. He's got 12 hits on the season, including three RBIs. Now, don't get me wrong. Those stats are from post-152, the 79ers. But... A big spot here for the young Legion player for the Mad Frogs could really make something happen. Again, don't need to score a run, but would love to get on base. Watch as this one go outside, evens it out at one and one. Keep taking pitches too. Larson now up to 88 pitches, throwing in the ball game. Definitely want quality at bats. You want each count to go deep to get Larson out of this ball game. Just three hits for the Mad Frogs. You've struggled to hit him all day. It would be super nice to have him out of the ball game here. And a couple hits might do that, but any out here certainly would not. You'd see Larson, no doubt, again in the next inning. This one, strike on the outside corner, and Larson continues to battle back. 90 pitches and continuing to look sharp, painting the edges. Bryce Sattler, pressure's on the Legion player, and he chases the outside pitch. And Larson survives once again, 91 pitches. And he's held the Mad Frogs to just one run through sixth inning. We'll head to the top of the seventh here on Live Ticket TV. Farmers Elevator is a proud supporter of the Mount Vernon Mustangs at the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator has been servicing the Mount Vernon area for over 75 years. See them for your agronomy and feed needs 
no matter the farming season. They will take care of all your grain handling needs as well. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator would like to wish the Mustangs and all the teams best of luck at the state tournament. Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Top of the seventh here on Live Ticket TV. 2024 State Amateur Baseball Tournament here in Mitchell, South Dakota. Game number five underway here at Cadwell Park. The Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks lead it 4-1 to one over the Minnow Mad Frogs. First pitch of the inning is a ball. Again, new pitcher. Last inning, Trey Christensen, the pickup player from Freeman. On the mound for the Minnow Mad Frogs. And for the Wood Ducks, it's Braden Odegaard who skies this one into left field. Very shallow, towering fly ball. And coming in to make the nice catch is Lair out and left. Yeah, Dylan Lair runs the country mile to chase it all the way into center territory at that point. Uh, as you can even kind of see the distinctions from left, center, and right because of the way they cut the grass here at Catwell Park. But Dylan Lair went a far way to chase it. And able to get out number one. Layer all the speed in the world out there. We've talked about it all broadcast long. First pitch. Ball to Brody Hare. The 1-0. Swung on and missed. Hare evens out the count. 1-1. One one. Fans don't forget, coming up after the conclusion of this game, Half hour after it, we got another game. Wrap up this four games of the day. Elk Point Colt 45s take on Redfield Dairy Queen. Set for 7.30. Of course, that one's not going to happen at 7.30, probably closer to 8 o'clock. Christensen dealing this one. Low and outside, 3-1. and one. Colt 45s. Spencer, a team that have consistently made the state turn the past four years, a team that has never gotten past the first round, though. They're looking to change that. Ground ball to third base, handled cleanly, and the throw made over to first by Braden Sattler. Brings us to two outs here in the top of the seventh. One out away from the old seventh inning stretch. As Nathan Adrian digs in for the Wood Ducks, second baseman, watches the first one straight down the pipe for a strike. Watches this one well outside. Adrian hitting 200 on the season. Exactly that. 2-1 after the high ball. Christensen winds and deals. This one looked good, but it's going to be a ball. Three and one, the count to Adrian. Hitters count, swinging hard, driving this one out to Lair in left field, who comes in and makes the diving play in shallow left. Seed on the instant replay here, Dylan Lair showing off the speed once more in that shallow left field area, coming in and making a pretty spectacular catch out there in the outfield. That'll move us to the bottom of the seventh here on Live Ticket TV. Family's needs are different and special. Will Funeral Chapel will listen with sensitivity, answer all questions, and respect your choices. The Will Funeral Chapel staff can assist you in planning and coordinating all the details. They will explain all the different options to make you feel at ease and most comfortable with all the decisions. Find out more by visiting their website at willfuneralchapel.com. Their sincerest hope is that you and your family will be comforted by their efforts. 
Are you in need of high quality lumber for your next project? Looking for top notch agronomy services to keep your crops thriving? Need a reliable source of propane and fuel for your home or business? Look no further than Tabor Lumber Co-op. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIY enthusiast, Tabor Lumber Co-op has everything you need to get the job done right. And with their competitive prices and top-notch customer service, you'll be glad you chose Tabor Lumber Co-op for all your lumber, propane, and agronomy services. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family-owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years' experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800-KILL-BUGS. Quick fly ball here in the bottom of the seventh to lead things off. The nine hole hitter Tyler Miller is retired for the Minnow Mad Frogs for the first out of the inning. Got a nice good stretch up here with take me out to the ball game. Decent crowd on hand here at Cadwell Park. Not quite as many as we saw yesterday. A little bit chilly out here. I know that the press box was a bit cold with some 62 degree air flowing in. Earlier today with the windows open. But once again, thankful for another beautiful day of baseball here at Cadwell Park. Thanks again for tuning in. Spencer Bewley alongside Heath Nimke. Yeah, with that uh, cooler air moving in as well. Haven't maybe seen offensive explosion. Now, I don't know if anything's going to match what we saw 38 runs last night in just two games. <laughs> we did see a grand slam in the last game played here. Jody Brozick called it the first he's seen in 11 years, I believe, of working this tournament. Actually, he knows he's seen at least two more. Either way, a very rare occurrence here at Cadwell Park. You gave up one of those grand slams, right? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Bro never gave oh, up a grand slam. You hit him. Only hit him. The Brock and Bro show before me and Heath took over up here. Great having all those guys uh, help us out throughout the broadcast, and certainly going to be a few more coming up throughout the weekend. Long week ahead, long week over a week ahead for us here at Live Ticket TV, bringing you all the action of all 37 games of this state amateur tournament. Going to have some special guests join us into next week as well, including looking forward to. Ross Simple, the new athletic director at Dakota Wesleyan University, going to join us next week. Of course, the partnership between Live Ticket TV and Dakota Wesleyan announced this week. We have a pickle here. Dylan Lair is caught in it, diving for first base. The throw in time, and Odegaard able to tag him out. So a rare occurrence. Dylan Lair picked off and then caught in the pickle. Maybe just a little bit too eager there to get to second base. It's his third time he has been picked off this season. So not something you'd totally expect from probably the fastest guy on this baseball team. Might Maybe on the baseball field right now. Also, the way this one is going right now here in the bottom of the seventh, the way that Metal Mad Frog's offense has produced, you're starting to see guys that could potentially be stepping up to the plate for the very final time tonight unless they get some offense going. And again, we see only three hits and error committed. So these guys kind of at the bare minimum, if you will, of batting around in the order. Struggle at the plate continues for the Minnow Mad Frogs. As you mentioned, just three hits. And we're through six and two-thirds. In the ball game. That's why you put the best batters in the top of the lineup so they get as many opportunities as they possibly can. But now with Dylan Larrick, and he gets on, but then gets caught stealing. Could potentially be the last time we see Spencer Schultz up for the Mad Frogs. Larson just threw his 101st pitch of the ball game. So may not see him out for too much longer. But right now, he is continuing to absolutely deal, and he's fired up, strutting back quickly to the dugout of the Wood Ducks, rightfully so. 
Just one run given up through now seven innings of the ball game. We'll head to the top of the eighth in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platte, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at FarmCoSD.com. FarmCo, Farm feeding your future. Future. Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek and Howard, and Valley Station in Armour are your 100% locally owned team of agronomy experts. We offer Agronomy 365, which provides info in real time to make decisions that result in better, more profitable farming. We know you and your operation with service beyond compare. Get a jump on spring planning with Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek and Howard, and Valley Station in Armour. We are ag done right the American way. Bank West is rooted in South Dakota. Committed to local success. Just like you. We're all connected. In South Dakota. For South Dakota. Convenient, connected, committed. Bank West. Top of the eighth here, the Wood Ducks looking to extend their lead. They lead at 4-1 to one right now over the Menno Mad Frogs. And Heath, largely a big part of that is because of Logan Larson dealing on the mound. Yeah, you talk about Logan Larson and the performance that he has had so far tonight. Um, when you look at, if you ever get into maybe like the betting side of things, or you like to watch the trends of what pitchers have been able to do throughout this season, Larson has struggled. We talked about his stats and usually the average distance that he goes. Nelson pops this one to the first baseman who drops it. Schultz unable to handle it. But the last game that Larson pitched in was against the Coleman A's to make the state tournament. Spencer, he went a complete game there, throwing 171 pitches to get the win. He gave up six hits on four runs, three earned. He struck out 15 in that game. And again, that was the game for them to get to the state tournament. Ground ball right back to the pitcher. And after the second life, Gage Nelson is retired. Slipped on home plate there as he was taken off to first. The first out of the inning, but Heath going back to that complete game, 170 pitches. Now Larson has already eclipsed 100, just barely. We might see him go the whole game here if he continues to pitch well. I'll say it certainly, I mean, 171 seems extremely high. He's going to throw a lot less than that too here. Unless Meadow can find some type of offense and get it going. Haven't shown much. Thus far, neither team really has, except for the one inning from Hartford Humboldt. It was the top of the fifth. They put up four. Since then, it is a lot of zeros up on that scoreboard for both teams. Two and one the count now. Whiting the catcher. Swings on this one. Grounds it to second base. Miller is there. Easy throw over to first, and the second out of the inning is Whiting. So two outs as Camden McDonald, the nine-hole hitter, right fielder, steps up to bat. Christensen pitching well so far. Here he's going to Bait a strike off the foul ball into the bullpen. 39 pitches for him coming in relief. And as we mentioned, he's thrown a lot of strikes out of his 39 pitches. 26 of them have been considered pitches. Or excuse me, strikes. So a good ratio for him, and it's showing. Really forcing these Wood Duck hitters to put a good bat on the ball. And they have not really been able to do so. As here's another pop out to the first baseman Schultz. He's able to handle this one in foul territory to end the inning. On to the bottom of the eighth, coming up next, 
here on Live Ticket TV. CNB is proud to support our local farmers. Rooted in agriculture, we are committed to our customers. You can shop local with CNB, your John Deere dealer, providing you with new and used equipment, parts on hand, and service all year round. Our entire inventory is available to you online at DeerEquipment.com. CNB, proud to be your local John Deere dealer. Live Ticket TV continues to grow and bring you more sports coverage than ever before. And now, Live Ticket TV is happy to announce their partnership into college athletics with Dakota Wesleyan University. That's right, Tiger Nation, Live Ticket TV, and DWU have teamed up to bring you coverage of all home sporting activities for the Tigers. If you'd like to advertise during these sporting events, give Live Ticket TV a call. Dakota Wesleyan University Sports, now on Live Ticket TV. Into the bottom of the eighth here at Cadwell Park. The Hartford Humboldt Wood Ducks leading 4-1 over the Minnow Mad Frogs. In this game five of the 2024 State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Horizon Healthcare. At Horizon Health, they're focused on what's real and what's rural. With advanced technology and a personal touch, they deliver medical, dental, and behavioral health care that's open to everyone. Huge thanks to all of our sponsors here in this state tournament, helping us out at Live Ticket TV, making this possible. Mad Frogs trying to get something going here on the offensive end, have not scored since the first inning. It's made this game move along rather quickly, 7-14. And they got two hits during that inning as well. So only see a hit since then. Go back a couple innings ago, they did get a run on first and second, but that was a hit and an error that resulted in that. But as you mentioned, uh, just struggling to find this offense for the Meadow Mad Frogs. No time like now to do it. Mack and Opplinger, the three hole. Designated hitter, one of the best on this team, is up to bat right now. 0 for 1 on the night. He's been on base but no hits. Grounds this one to Hare at short. Nice forehand pick and good throw over to first for the first out of the inning. That one was close. I thought that was gonna come out of the glove there for Brody, but you saw it hit the palm of his glove all of a sudden, just trickle a little bit forward, but able to close the grasp on it and make a good throw to first to get the quick out. Saw a lot of errors in the first day of this tournament off of attempted forehand picks like that on short hops, but a great job by the Legion player to handle that one. And here he's got another opportunity, handles it off the high hop, makes the throw over, and Hers having himself an inning here. Yeah, I say, uh, not looking too bad for Brody, the Legion player for the Wood Ducks. Back-to-back -back putouts for him, and again, that one came in extremely hot, kept that arm in tight, and just makes the good throw over to first. Credit him for getting his body in front of the ball. A lot of times the errors come when you try and just throw that glove out there and pick it. He used to say in uh, football, bring that flipper in if you're an offense. Bring the flipper in. Bring the flipper in and get a block there. That's kind of the move he made to make sure that ball didn't get past him. So two outs, one to know the count now to Herbal. I know it shock you a little bit, Spencer, that I played offensive line with the size that I am. That does shock me a little bit. <laughs> It's okay. You're aggressive. I can see you getting after it, Heath. One on one. Herbal takes this one outside. Two and one works ahead in the count. Don't forget, fans. Colt 45's Redfield Dairy Queen coming up about a half hour after the conclusion of this game again, set for 7:30. But uh, we'll have that one coming up looking forward to a great game between the Redfield Dairy Queen, a team that has not lost yet this season, and an Elk Point team that is looking to find their first ticket into the round of 16. A lot of good games coming up here in the round of 32. This state amateur tournament. Herbal watches this one go by. 
Going to be a packed house tomorrow at 11 o'clock. The Alexandra taking on Flandreau. And then Platt and Del Rapids Mudcat set for the 1 o'clock afternoon game. I know both those teams travel extremely well. Larson gets the call on the check swing. And an unbelievable outing here. You see it on the replay. Hard to say if Herbolt came around. A lot of times the most deceiving thing is that the hands get so far out in front that even though the barrel lagged behind the wrists, the wrists were already so far out in front that it goes across the plate, and it's another strikeout for Logan Larson. We move to the final inning of play here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. BNS Services LLC is your locally owned repair service center. We specialize in full service automotive, semi trailer, and small engine repair, along with tire services. Repair services range from a simple oil change to sharpening mower blades to a more complicated electrical diagnosis. Located at 38058 South Dakota Highway 34, look for us on the hill heading west out of town. Phone Cody Barber, 605 350 4293, and Arian Schooler, 605 770 9398. BNS Services LLC is a proud sponsor of Westington Springs Spartans. Athletic. Dimmick Cheese has been made. Top of the order due up here in the top of the ninth for Hartford Humboldt. Quickly a foul ball from Austin King, who is 0 for 3 on the night. We'll have 1, 2, 3, Austin King, and we'll have Braden Hare and Dawson Baker following it up here in the top of the ninth. 4 to 1, Wood Ducks still lead it over the Mad Frogs. King drives this one into center, and it'll be a base hit to start the top of the ninth for the Wood Ducks. Great start for the Wood Ducks. I mean, we always talk about it, Spencer. We always say the insurance policy. You feel maybe a little comfortable the way the bats have gone for the Metal Mad Frogs if you're the Wood Ducks. That, and that three might be enough, but if you could add a couple more here, that would be absolutely perfect to make sure you can walk away with a win and move on to the round of 16. And King's just the guy you want on. He's a leadoff for a reason. Left fielder has some speed. Hare, the third baseman, stepping in now. Watches the first one go by for a strike. Christensen, 42 pitches. Currently in relief for Doug Hall. Swung on and missed. 0-2 will be the count. Brayden Hare has had himself... A day, three for three on the evening. A couple of RBIs. Runner on the way. Throw down to second. Never really had a chance. Well off to the right side for Miller. And King steals second base. And King's going to be called out. I am not sure what happened at all. Cole, got anything for us over there? Batter interference out at second is the call. So it's a double play against the Wood Ducks. So the Mad Frogs get bailed out a little bit as Baker steps in. So two outs now. 0-1 count to Baker. Baker, the pickup player, one for three this afternoon. Now we had a football land in left field. But we're back in play. The 0 1 outside to Baker. Brings the count to one and one. Eight hits on the afternoon for the Wood Ducks. And mark this one down as another if it stays fair. Just foul down the left field line. 
Actually, I shouldn't say that. Dylan Lair actually had a beat on that ball. If that ball was fair, he might have been there. Saw the diving catch earlier. Speedy out in left. No doubt about it. Seen some great plays out there. We knew it was a strong suit for the Minnow Mad Frogs. What hasn't been a strong suit is hitting. Just three hits on the evening. Only one error in the field. It's just simply been a dominant batting performance by the Wood Ducks. This one popped straight up to the middle of the infield. Sattler there calls off the second baseman and makes the catch. So that'll end the inning, but just three outs left for the Menno Mad Frogs to make something happen. We'll see what they'll do up next here on Live Ticket TV. Handmade artisan cheese for over 90 years and has over 25 flavors of cheese. Stop by the store for sampling of all the cheeses. The store also offers several South Dakota made products. And at the store, find Remedy Brewing on tap. Dimmick Cheese offers gift boxes and fundraisers are available. To find out more, go to the website, DimmickDairy.com or call 605 928 3833. And don't forget to check your local grocery store for their premium cheeses and cheese spreads. Dimmick Cheese. You are a dynamite contractor. Your younger brother Gary is a slightly less dynamite contractor, but together you make mom proud. Look at you two, and look at your crew. Brenda the Calculator Cutler, Bill the Drill Robinson, and then there's the new guy. New guy struggles with stairs, and that'll cost you. Lucky for you, you have IMT Business Insurance. Learn more at imtins.com. Be worry-free with IMT. Events on Florida. Mad Frogs certainly need a hero as Hero blares out at Cadwell Park from the press box speakers. Three outs to score three runs or four if you're in it to win it here in the ninth. Leading things off will be Nick Ratzloff, the right fielder. Logan Larson looking to throw a complete game here in the opening round of the state amateur tournament. Be a pretty incredible feat. But if I was a betting man, I'd bet on him to do it here. Starts off with the ball. They will go ahead and send out Andrew Zimmer to the bullpen just in case. And some more action out there as well. So a couple pitchers warming up here. I like the decision for the Wood Ducks, as you mentioned, just in case anything goes sideways. But if you can get that uh, first out here with Ratzloff, you're going to feel extremely comfortable with Larson being able to go the distance. Again, we saw him throw 171 pitches in his last performance to make it to the state tournament at 116 right now. My contacts haven't failed me. I believe it's Preston Riddle who was actually already warming up in the bullpen before they sent Zimmer out there. But I don't know if they're going to need it. Larson, another strikeout to add to this incredible evening of dealing. Is that 11? 11 strikeouts for Logan Larson. Averaging more than a strikeout an inning, an incredible evening for him. And he's still got two more outs to work with. Deals a strike to Braden Sattler, the third baseman. Go back to the second inning, two in the game with that hat trick of three strikeouts on all three batters. Right away, another swing and a miss. Two strikes to Sattler. Seven and eight hole hitters due up here. Sattler, the seven hole. Bryce Sattler, the Legion player on deck, the eight hole. This one outside, poked into the netting. Somehow, Sattler got a piece of it. That may have been one of the fastest pitches from Larson we've seen all day. That one had some heat on it. He's certainly fired up. He's been fired up after the last couple of innings, walking off the mound with some swagger and trying to get it done here for a complete game. This one just outside. Couldn't get Braden Sattler to chase. The third baseman, 0 for 3, trying to get his first hit. And extend this ball game. Swing and a miss. Strike number three. Back-to-back -back K's for Logan Larson. And the night just keeps getting better for him. 
For Sattler, that's his third time he has struck out here in the ballgame. In fact, now Bryce Sattler, the Legion pickup, steps up. He has also struck out three times. 12 total strikeouts in the ballgame for Larson. We talked about a little bit ago, the two different guys warming up in the bullpen. Looks like Larson's going to be able to go the distance. Right away, once again, swing and a miss from Bryce Sattler, the shortstop, who is also 0 for 3 here. Larson, just low, brings the count to 1 and 1. We've already seen him strike out the side in this ballgame. Earlier in the ballgame, three backwards Ks in a row. 12 strikeouts so far to his name, looking for his 13th. Two strikes, one ball. The payoff here to Settler. This one fouled away back into the stands. Sattler trying to do anything he can to extend this game, extend this tournament for his team. Larson, the one-two, this one just low. And if you're from the South Central League as well, trying to avoid the first two teams they've had in the state tournament, could go 0-2. The two-two, deuces are wild. This one high, works it into a full count. So Bryce Sattler has come all the way back from 0-2, dug himself out of the hole. A fair count here, three and two, two outs. All the pressure on the Legion player. This one pokes down the right side, it's gonna drop foul. So credit Sattler, an impressive at bat here. Credit Larson continuing to find the zone. 130 pitches in now, and he is still wheeling and dealing all over the strike zone. Larson winds up the 3-2, just low. Can't get the call here on Bryce Sattler, and the Mad Frogs have a runner aboard. Fourth batter that Larson has walked in the ball game. So now Tyler Middle, Miller, excuse me, the second baseman, will step up with a runner on first base. Big moment if we see as Miller step up the ball game. Strikeout for him and as well, and all of a sudden he's going to get hit. And Larson has, act, yeah, he's just hit the batter. Tyler Miller heads to first base. And as commanding as this game feels in the hands of Larson, with two runners on, the tying run is coming up to the plate. He is also the and best. And it's Austin King. No, 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 no. Dylan Lair is going to step Excuse up. Excuse me. Dylan, Dylan Lair, wrong team. Dylan, no, both number fives, left fielders. Dylan Lair is also the best hitter for the Metal Mad Frogs. We have seen him do nothing but struggle so far tonight. Good friends with Dylan. I know he would agree with that. He's would not be happy with the performance that he's had. But this is a big spot for the Mental Mad Frogs. If Lair, again, he doesn't need to bring in a run, but if he can at least get on base, bases are loaded and put yourself in a really good spot. And again, Spencer, it's the heart of the order. The top three batters stepping up here for the Mental Mad Frogs. They can make something happen offensively. This is where it gets a little bit dangerous. As you mentioned, best hitters coming up now for the Mental Mad Frogs. Lair, the leadoff, lots of speed, a dangerous hitter, has struggled so far, so expecting him to find a way on. This one outside, now Larson starting to get a little bit wild. 2-0, and you know he's antsy to try and make this a complete game. He knows he's on a short leash, some pressure on his side, if you will. Pressure on pressure here. Larson, the 2-0, this one's in for a called strike at the knees. Lair wasn't too happy about it. And yeah, you can look back to the up there to get a confirmation of where was that pitch located because he certainly disagreed. Larson, the 2 1. Lair watches this one about the same spot. It does look a hair low from our vantage point. 
But consistent calls, all that matters. Cole Lars disagrees with me. That one's right at the thighs. I'm standing up. I'm biased. Larson gets a ground ball. 5-6 hole. Will there be a play? No. Safe in at second. And the bases are loaded for the Minnow Mad Frogs. Yeah, certainly a hit for the ball game. And that one just some great spot where it's placed. Her was kind of stumbling over his feet to make the play, but that was also a good jump there by Miller. It's two outs, so everyone's like, oh, could it be concerned error? No, the guys are going. The base runners are going as soon as they see the ground ball, so just a great play overall. And it goes back to what I just said. Dylan did not need to get an RBI. He just needed to get on base. Now Spencer Schultz steps up the bat, batting just over 300 on the season. A really good spot for the Mental Mad Frogs. And you knew that Lair was going to reach on that ground ball, it was just a question of whether or not Miller was going to get to second because Hare was absolutely going to second all the way as that ball took him way to his left side. And a perfect play there by Brody as well to go to second because you certainly weren't going to make the play with Lair speed at first. Spencer Schultz, that was a good-looking pitch there from Larson. Got some ooze from the crowd. Wood Duck fans not super thrilled with it. But nonetheless, two and one, two outs, bases loaded. Schultz, the two-hole hitter, grounds this one to shortstop. This could end it, and it's bobbled at shortstop. Unbelievable, and the inning continues for the Minnow Mad Frogs. So Brody gets tagged with the error on the bobble, again with the speed. This time, certainly didn't have the play at second, but because that one came quicker to him, was not moving towards it, you pick up that ball and you throw over to first and get Spencer Schultz at first again, bobbles it, counts for an error, keeps the bases loaded, and now 4-2 all of a sudden. And a base hit likely ties the ball game, and it's exactly the guy you'd want up, Mackin Opplinger, the designated hitter, one of the best for this team. He takes strike one, that's a great spot from Larson. Obviously, the frustration probably building for Larson, wanting to throw this complete game. None of this is really on him, necessarily. Nerves all around for the Wood Ducks. Somebody's got to make a play to close this thing out. And for, that one's inside for Larson. And for Opplinger, by the way, two home runs for him this season. Otherwise, RBIs looking at 15 RBIs coming into the state tournament. That's true. A ball to the wall could end this ball game. Schultz at first. He's got a little bit of speed. But not much as a first baseman. This one fouled off. 1-2. Count favors Larson. And by the way, you're not thinking at the opposite side that Larson is in trouble pitching-wise. I mean, his last two hits in the error have both gone to the shortstop, so he's certainly still in a good spot pitching-wise, up to 144 pitches. This one chops to the left side. Someone's got to make a play, and they will. He's thrown out at second. And finally, Hare ends it with an easy play on the 6-4 putout. Wow, what an evening. What an evening of ball. We're going to step aside for just a moment here on Live Ticket TV. When we come back, quick post-game summary before we move in to the 7.30 ball game. A locally owned and operated sunflower processing company that buys all types of sunflowers for the edible and bird food industries. They market sunflowers domestically and internationally, so they have a wide range of options to get you the best price for your sunflowers. Most advanced sunflower contracts have an act of God clause, so you don't have to worry if Mother Nature takes a toll on your crop. Give Jared or Danny a call to get you the most profit out of your sunflowers. 
A credit card that fits your lifestyle and saves you money. Why would you settle for anything less? A Dakota Land Federal Credit Union Visa will earn travel rewards, 1% cash back, and 9.90% annual percentage rate. The right rate and all the right features puts you right where you want to be. Stop by any convenient branch location or check us out online at dakotalandfcu.com. Dakota Land, federally insured by NCUA. Out here, you learn that to keep growing, you have to keep changing. Back here at Cadwell Park, a dramatic end to game number five. Hartford Humboldt holds on to take down Minnow in a ninth inning thriller. Minnow loaded the bases, got a run in. They were down 4-1 heading into the ninth. Scored one before stranding three men on. And Hartford Humboldt hangs on to win it 4-2. Eight hits for the Wood Ducks. It was a great day at the plate for them. We take a look at who got those hits. It was King with one, Hare the third baseman with three, Dawson Baker with one, Odegaard with one, Hare with one, and then McDonald with one as well, the nine hole there. Pitching for Hartford Humboldt. The man of the hour, Logan Larson. Nine innings pitched, a complete game. Four hits, gave up just two runs, and a lot of that wasn't on him. One earned run, only given up. Walked four, but struck out 12 batters on the evening. So a great day at the mound for him. You see the final line score on your screen. Minnow scored one in the bottom of the first, and then were completely silent until the bottom of the ninth where they were able to get a lot of momentum on their side and make this thing interesting, but ultimately only got one run to come across. As for Humboldt Hartford, it was all in the fifth inning. Nothing doing for innings one through four or six through nine. Just an explosive top of the fifth where they score four runs to take this thing home. On the pitching side for the Minnow Mad Frogs, Hall throws five innings, gives up six hits, four runs total, four earned runs. As I mentioned, great day of hitting for the Wood Ducks. Struck out just two. Christensen in relief, four innings pitched, gave up two hits, no runs. He actually pitched a pretty good game. The pickup player on the mound. Final score, four to two. Humboldt Hartford hangs on to beat Minnow. They will advance to the round of 16 to play the winner of Elk Point and Redfield, which is coming up next here on Live Ticket TV. For Heath Nimke, I've been Spencer Buley. Have a great rest of your evening and stay with us for this 7.30 ball game.